Okay, we're live now, so you can start at any time. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for participating. Good morning. Thanks for participating. Good, Good morning. Thank you guys for participating virtually. We're going to take this slow at first just so that we can get it uh, uh, running smoothly. And then uh, I think as, it, as the meeting progresses, it'll get easier and easier for us. But uh, So I want to call the meeting to order of the Independent Transportation Surtax Oversight Board. Uh, the date is May 22nd, 2020. It's 9.30 a.m. And I would like to say a few things just as ground rules for the meeting. Oversight members and people in the in the uh, virtual audience, if you could put your phones on mute unless you want to speak or unless you're called on to speak. But for the most part, please keep your phones on mute because we do hear sound in the background. I also want to let you guys know that as we go through some of these projects that we're reviewing, um, please, if there's one that you want to pull, you can request that we pull it, but we're not going to get into discussion. We're not going to make long comments until the afternoon. So if you pull one, it gets pulled, and it's going to be discussed this afternoon, okay? So you don't need to get into any reasons why. All you have to do is say, I'd like to pull item number, whatever that number is, and we'll pull it. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Public can make comments. We don't have any public, anybody from the public who has signed up to speak, so there's nothing to discuss about that. And that's it, right? Okay. So the roll call. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yes. Chairman, is the uh, computer or the online system up yet? Yes, I think the webcast is on. Because I'm getting it says it hasn't started yet. Hmm. We'll check that. I Hold on just it. a second. You're on my computer. She sees it? If you refresh, it might help. Thank you. You're welcome. You got it? Okay. Um, Ms. Thompson, could we do a roll call, please? Sure, Chair. Um, Alan Hooper. Here. Allison Love. Anthea. Anthea Pennant. Consuelo Kelly. Here. Doug Coleman. Here. George Cavros. Here. Phil Allen. Present. Ronald Frazier. Here. And Shay Smith. I'm here. Chair, we have a quorum. Excellent. And I see Ms. Pennant is walking in. I can't see her smile, but I know she is smiling. She's got a mask on. How are you doing? Good. So we'll add her to the attendance. Okay. So the first item on the agenda, since there is no public participation, since nobody is registered to speak from the public, we'll go to item number two, which is uh, the uh, approval of the January 30, 2020 Oversight Board Minutes. Do I have a motion? Doug Coleman, I so move. Okay, do we have I a second? second. Okay. Allison Love, second. Very good, thank you. Okay, um, should I just do a yay? All those in favor? So, yay. Yes. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Okay. The next item is the review and approval of supplemental Broward County Public Works construction ready projects. There's 12 projects. They total $24.5 million. And I'm going to recognize Mr. Tony Hugh. Is that, that's how you pronounce it, right? It's Hu. Hu. Okay. 
Uh, he's the Deputy Director of Public Works for Broward County. It's all yours. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the Oversight Board. Uh, happy to be here and I'll be speaking with regards to the supplemental budget request that we're um, requesting for FY 2020. We're actually very pleased that we're able to be in this position to request these supplemental budgets. These are projects that we had originally intend to bring forth the Oversight Board on FY 2021. But because we've been able to advance some of these projects faster than we originally anticipated, and because of the current climate, it, it, it's, a, it's a very good opportunity for us to advance the project and get started on the construction of these projects as quickly as possible. So um, before I get into the nitty gritties of it, I just want to explain that there are essentially seven major projects that, um, um, uh, that we're requesting. Six of those seven are because of change in conditions since the surtax program was in originally uh, developed. There's a, a deterioration of certain uh, facilities that we need to correct and make sure that we um, uh, get them repaired and, and replaced as quickly as possible. So six out of the seven associated with that, um, that reason. The seventh is just because they're good reasons for us to be able to advance a project as quickly as possible so that we can get going on that project. So that's what these seven projects are. And I'll go into the, the, the details of it a little bit. So the first, <clears throat> excuse me, the first project that I want to talk about is on McNabb Road. And, and that project is made up of actually two components, a sidewalk component, which is an existing uh, uh, project already in the surtax program, and a new drainage improvement project. And we label that as D101. Uh, in, in, uh, um, to conform with the, um, what we have spoken with the Oversight Board previously, that all the 100 projects are the new projects, so you can tell very easily that it is a new project. And the driver for this project is because of the drainage in that area has deteriorated since the program has ori uh, originally developed. And one of the photos on the top left here, you can see some of the drainage issues. And as you get, and, and um, as we get into repairing the drainage and it, it makes much more sense to do the sidewalks can, uh, at the same time so we don't inter interrupt the public and so forth. So uh, going to details, uh, as I mentioned before, S04 is an existing sidewalk project that we originally anticipated. We're going to move them up um, uh, and there's no change in the original cost from what it was in the surtax. And the next project is, this is the new one that corrects the drainage issues and again the uh, the budget that we're asking for is on the FY 2020 supplemental budget request, $3.4 million in conjunction with the sidewalk, again, performing them at the same time. And this project is ready for construction. We have contracted lineup and, and we will be proceeding uh, as quickly as the oversight board and then our board approve the project. The second project is on Riverside Drive in uh, the city of Coral Springs, and it's going to be made up of four projects, three of them in total, three of them are already in the surtax program. As you can see, the S39 sidewalks, B21 bike lanes, B31 bike lanes, it just got broken up into two pieces. And then the new driver for the project is also a new drainage project, D102. Uh, the, the four projects add up together uh, into $5.7 million. And this is just a breakdown of the each individual component so that we can kind of follow it through the way that it is through the program. S39, again, like I said, is an existing sidewalk project. Um, um, there's, um, uh, in this situation, there's the, the existing asphalt sidewalks has also deteriorated, so it's a very good opportunity to combine uh, a, a public safety issue, a drainage issue, and then also bike lanes, again, doing, uh, performing all of them together. So B21, existing bike, uh, not existing, but a, a planned surtax project. B31 is just a continuation of it. It's just the next segment of it. And then the last one, D102, is the component that, along with the sidewalk, kind of ties this whole Riverside project together as a whole. So um, those are the budget, project budget requests uh, for 2020. For 2020, again, it is ready, designed, ready for construction. Uh, B101 is um, uh, is the same, similar issue. Um, it what the it, the the reason for moving this project up earlier is because the, a lot of the asphalt in that area has deteriorated over the years. There's some photographs of that, especially around a manhole that that you can see. So. Um, so in terms of doing the milling and resurfacing, it makes sense to also do a bike lane there at the same time because there's room and opportunity for us to do that. So that's a new project, and the total cost requests $4.8 million ready for construction. 
The next project is D07 Northwest 27th Avenue. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's um, uh, uh, on the left-hand side of the slide there, there are photographs of the existing, this is on the in, photographs of the inside of the pipelines. Uh, some of the drainage pipes that have deteriorated uh, is a cert pro project that's already in the surtax and we're moving it up, the, um, uh, we're moving it up for construction because, um, uh, because of the condition of the pipe and it is also, again, ready for construction. 0102 is a bridge repair project, it's a new project uh, and the reason for it is, is that the FDOT performs a periodic inspection of the bridges in Broward County. In, um, uh, in the mid-2019 last year, they identified some structural issues with regards to this bridge, and we want to make sure that we repair that as quickly as possible. And, um, and because this is a new condition, wasn't anticipated, uh, is a new project, and the request, supplemental budget request for it is $2.2 million, and it's ready for construction. The next one is a similar, pro a similar type of project, also a, bridge repair, uh, also a bridge repair project. It's 0103 Oakland Park Boulevard, and again, it's, a, it's a also a project, uh, excuse me, a condition, a bridge condition that was identified in the most recent FDOT bridge inspection report. The budget request is $3.3 million ready for construction. The last project uh, is a Sheridan Street capacity expansion project, and it's actually included two, it's inclusive of two projects that are already in the surtax program. It's the R17 and the R18, both capacity expansion. Um, what the, and, and this project is just the, um, um, it is the one that I mentioned earlier. This is the project that's not ready for construction. This is a project that um, we see an opportunity to take advantage of some of the work that FDOT has, has been doing on the I-75 freeway. They, um, and this project is, is, in a good, is in a good shape that we can proceed on it and that'll be an, enable us to match up with some of the improvements that FDOT already has already made in that area. So we see an opportunity to advance it. Uh, this is an interesting project is, is that um, we, we take the multiple different methods of delivering project. This is one project that um, uh, we want to utilize the design built method. We, we've used the design built method before in a number of, uh, uh, of our other projects. You need to use them at appropriately at the right locations and so forth. We believe that this is the right location for that project to be able uh, enable us to advance a little quicker. And so what we want to do is that we're requesting and actually just want to point out to the board's attention is, is that on your slide, you see that there's the, the bottom line there, FY 2020 supplemental budget request is stated, is stated in there $300,000 for design build criteria package. It's actually $400,000 that we're requesting. In the matrix that the board uh, has received, the number is correct, but we just um, um, was not able to catch up and make that correction on the slide. So it's $400,000, and it's the preparation of design bill package that allows us to take it out to the market um, uh, for bidding purposes with contractors that I think would be very interested in, um, uh, in, in, in this project. So this is the last one. Again, just want to make sure that, uh, everyone's aware that the other projects I mentioned before are ready for construction. This one is not. So. Uh, 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 we're happy to answer any questions uh, in the afternoon. And um, again, we look, um, we're excited about the opportunity that we can advance some of these projects uh, in the current economic situation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and members um, of the board. Okay, I'm gonna pull three of those projects and I'm only pulling them because just, it'll be a quick clarification okay. in the afternoon. Great. Those are gonna be B104, 0102, and 0103. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alan? Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Yes. Doug Coleman, can I ask a question of Tony? If, if it's in the d specifics of, a, of one of the projects, I'll, I'll have to say, ask the question in the afternoon if it's something that just ha goes with uh, just or how we're doing the meeting. Go ahead. It's a, it's a general question. I can wait till this afternoon. Okay. Sounds good. So could, could I ask you please to pull up the um, the eligibility slides? Or do you want to deal with the eligibility of the, take up a motion for the eligibility of the county projects at this time, or do you want to wait until the end? We can do it with, with the others in the afternoon. Okay. That's all right. 
Okay, so now am I going to number four? Okay. All right, so the, the next item is uh, the, rev the review of cycle one, uh, uh, 2020 municipal capital project recommendations from the MPO. Uh, there's 110 projects in this, totaling $72 million. Um, I'm gonna recognize, again, uh, please keep your phone on mute, and if you wanna pull an item, since we're going through 110, you might want to pull it. Don't do like I did on the last one and wait till the end, unless you want to. But you might want to pull it uh, as he goes through the projects. Um, but there's 110 of them. We're going to go through them quickly. And then this afternoon, if there's any pulled, we can discuss them. So I'm going to recognize uh, Mr. Andrew Mr. Riddle. Chair. Hello? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, yes I just would like to add. I wanted to ask if possibly the microphone for the speaker could be turned up because Tony was very faint compared to your voice. Okay, well, I'm kind of a loud mouth, but yes, we'll, we're going to make almost everybody turn up their microphone compared to me. <laughs> but yes, we will. Uh, can we Thank you. can we set that up? Okay, we're doing it. Um, so, Mr. Riddle, Surtax Services Manager, it's all yours. Good morning, Chair, members of the board. I'm Andrew Riddle, Surtax Services Manager with the Broward MPO, and I will be presenting the Cycle 1 Fiscal Year 2020 Municipal Capital Projects. Before we go over the Cycle 1 projects, I would like to provide some background on the process. Here are the three documents that got us to where we are today. The Surtax Ordinance enacted in June 2018 and amended in January 2020. The surtax agreement with the cities executed in August 2018 and amended in June 2019, and the MPO surtax services agreement executed in April 19. These documents guided the MPO surtax services process in evaluating the municipal capital projects that were included in, in the original surtax plan that was adopted by the county commission in September 2018 and by the voters in November 2018. The MPO was tasked to prioritize these projects using a modified process it uses for a federal program called the Complete Streets and Other Localized Initiatives Program. MPO Surtax staff was tasked in the ILA to review, rank, and prioritize capital projects and the original Surtax plan for local Surtax funding. The Cycle 1 list of priorities was transmitted to the county staff on February 28th in advance of the March 1st deadline and was posted on the Surtax website. The MPO Surtax staff was not tasked to perform an eligibility review for the pro capital projects in the original Surtax plan. The eligibility review of these projects will be conducted today by this board in coordination with the Surtax General Council. The amended surtax ordinance requires MPO surtax staff to assist in the eligibility review for new and swap out capital projects beginning in February 2021. County staff and MPO staff will be developing the new and swap out application process later this year, and the county commission must approve this application process. The ranking and prioritization process has three factors of emphasis. All projects were ranked based on their ability to alleviate congestion and enhance connectivity. This is consistent with the surtax ordinance. The ranked projects were prioritized based on project readiness, which includes shovel readiness as required by the ILA. The MPO surtax effort included extensive coordination with our Surtax partners in a very short time. Within a six month period, we held four workshops with our municipal partners, completed 28 one-on-one -on -one meetings with our cities last fall, and another 27 one-on-one -on -one meetings this past February. We provided monthly MPO board and advisory committee updates. We completed 24 engineering reviews with the city staff to assess shovel readiness, and we had continuous communication with county staff with biweekly coordination meetings. Through these coordination efforts, 
our cert, with our Surtex cert, efforts, um, we established the work mix categories and points distribution. Each project was assigned points based on its work mix in relation to the ordinance factors. High points were assigned to capacity increases, transit, sidewalks, bike lanes, and lower points were assigned to landscaping, hardscape, and signage. Here are the ranking criteria and points distribution that was established at the October and December workshop with the cities and how they relate to the surtax ordinance. The first three, employment and population density, access and support to transit, and incident delay support both ordinance factors of alleviating congestion and enhancing connectivity. These three have the highest points. Roadway level of service, connection to existing facilities, relate to one of the ordinance factors and have mid-range points. Resi resiliency and equity do not relate directly to the ordinance, but are important to our communities, so they have lower ranged points. Project performance will be evaluated in, in the future when projects are implemented. The work mix, criteria, and point scale were added to the geographic data set and the objective data-driven ranking tool. There was no opportunity for any person to subjectively assign points to these projects. It was all data-driven, eliminating bias from the ranking process. Each project was drawn or digitized as lines in the tool. The tool analyzed each project against the criteria layers and assigned points to each project. For instance, on the screen, you have a you have the roadway level of service layer and its points distribution. If a Surtex project is located within 200 feet of a roadway with a level of service F, then that project received a maximum level of service score of 50 points. This geoprocessing was done for all of the criteria for every project mapped in the tool. The ranked list of projects were then prioritized based on the cycle one priorities established with the Surtax partners, which include shovel readiness, new roads to complete the regional network, and geographic distribution of projects. The process takes the ranked list and then analyzes the project for shovel and program readiness, resulting in the prioritized list of projects. MPO staff and its professional engineer consider projects to be shovel ready if it has advanced enough to begin its construction phase this calendar year 2020. Our engineer evaluated the design plans and complexity of the project, design permit status, detailed cost estimates, bid status, and project schedule. Cycle one recommendations include fully funding all 33 shovel ready projects totaling an estimated $45 million. Four design projects totaling $6 million that are for new roadways to complete the regional network identified in the Southeast Florida Regional Transportation Plan. We also, rec we also are recommending the top three highest ranked projects for each of the 26 cities that submitted surtax projects for cycle one. These include 19 planning projects and 54 design projects for a total of 73 projects estimated at $21 million. The total for cycle one includes 110 projects estimated at 72 million. In your board packet, there are detailed project summary sheets for all 110 projects and corresponding maps. We also provided the county all supporting documentation provided by the cities. And now I'll, I will go over each of the 110 projects. I will pause after, after each project so that the board and its general counsel can indicate if they would like to pull the project for further discussion. Those viewing from virtually from home can follow along with this document. It is posted on the Surtax website called the MPO Municipal Capital Projects Prioritization. Mr. Riddle. Just a second. Do do we want to? Uh, there's some a list of ineligible projects. When, as Mr. Riddle goes through the presentation, mm -hmm. he's going to pause after each project, and and, it, and then 
either an oversight board member or Ms. Wallace will pull that project. Okay, very good. Thank yes. you. Sorry for the interruption. Project one, located in Wilt Manors, entails installing irrigation, landscaping, and wayfinding signage within the existing right-of-way. Work will occur with, within the medians, roadway bump outs, and sidewalks. These, these improvements follow the completion of the FDOT Complete Streets reconstruction of Wilton Drive. The current cost estimate is $747,000 $747,711, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $6 million. However, the city recently submitted a revised cost estimate of $287,000. The project is located on Wilton Drive between Middle River and Northeast 26th Street. Project two, Located in Sunrise entails improvements to the city's drainage system that has been identified in the city's stormwater master plan. Examples include culvert upgrades, pump station upgrades, new pump stations, installation flap gates, drainage structures, and new pipes. One project that is ready for construction is the replacement of stormwater pump station number five at a cost of $5,180,000. The plan's cost estimate is $10 million. The remaining balance will be used for additional drainage improvements um, identified in the stormwater master plan. The pump station is, the pump station number five is located at the South Florida Water Management District C13 Canal, south of West Oakland Park Boulevard, north of Sunrise, Lakes Boulevard, west of North Pine Island Road, and east of Knob Hill. Project three, oh, located uh, in Pompano Beach. Andrew, just one moment. I'd like to pull um, project number two, which is Sunrise, S-U-N-R-025.1. Very good. Project number three, located in Pompano Beach, entails the installation of new stormwater piping and associated infrastructure within the public right-of-way in the Bay Drive neighborhood. The current cost estimate is $1,174,741, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $4,290,485. The Bay Drive neighborhood stormwater improvements are located at the north of Robbins Road, south of North Riverside Drive, and east of A1A. Project four, located in North Lauderdale, includes traffic calming improvements on three roadways, Kimberly Boulevard, Tom O'Shanter Boulevard, and Southwest 81st Avenue. The program is divided into three phases with Kimberly Boulevard as the first phase. Improvements on Kim Kimberly Boulevard include traffic circle, sidewalk, road repair, signage, pavement markings. The current cost estimate for phase one is $1,998,187, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $5 million. The remaining balance will be used for phase two and three of the neighborhood traffic calming program. Project five, located in Weston, includes improvements to the intersection of Weston Road and Rural Palm Boulevard that consists of road widening, signalization, sidewalks, curb ramps, s signage, pavement markings, and minor landscaping improvements within the road right of way. The current cost estimate is 1612082 which is below the plan estimate of 2,200,000. The location of the intersection is at the intersection of Weston Road and Rural Palm Boulevard, west of I-75 and east of Bonaventure Boulevard. Project six, 
located in West Park, includes complete streets improvements consisting of drainage, system improvements, traffic calming devices, roads resurfacing, installation of sidewalks, and bike lanes. The current cost estimate is $1,638,987, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $2 million. The project is located on Southwest 25th Street from State Road 7 to State Ro Southwest 40th Avenue. Project 7, located in Coral Springs, includes the installation of three emergency traffic signals at fire station number 71, 80, and 64. The emergency signals at fire station 71 and 80 are construction ready. The current cost estimate for those two locations are is $496,917, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $900,000. The remaining balance will be used for the remaining signal located at fire station 64. The station number 71 is located at Coral Ridge Drive and Northwest 41st Street, and fire station 80 is located at Coral Springs Drive and Northwest, 820, Northwest 28th Court. Project 8, located in Dania Beach, includes the installation of drainage improvements within the public right-of-way to address drainage deficiencies occurring in the project area. The current cost estimate is $2,191,740, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $2,500,000. The project is located on Southwest 54th Street from US 441 to Southwest 43rd Terrace and on South, Southwest 43rd Terrace from Southwest 54th Street to Griffin Road. Project 9, located in Davie, includes lighting, sidewalks, road repair, signage pavement markings, and gateway features implement, implements within the public right-of-way to improve um, current roadway conditions. The current cost estimate is $4,859,167, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $5 million. However, the city is recently provided a revised cost estimate of $5,662,000. The project is located on Davie Road from Southwest 39th Street to Orange Drive. Andrew, I'm sorry, could you please repeat the revised cost estimate for this project? Yes, ma'am. Five million six hundred sixty-two thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. That is above. Thank you. Okay. Project ten I'd like to pull that one. Up. Yes, ma'am. I understood. Project 10, located in Lauderdale Lakes, includes gateway feature signs and digital display of four locations throughout the city. The current cost estimate is $1,378,000, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1,500,000. The signs are located at State Road 7 and Northwest 44th Street. State Road 7 and West Oakland Park Boulevard, Northwest 31st Avenue, and Northwest 39th Street, and West of Oakland Park Boulevard and Northwest 50th Avenue. Go ahead, Alice. It, it, on the list, pulled by municipality? Mm -hmm. Um, Lauderdale Lakes, right, 003 was um, removed, will be removed from consideration at the request of the municipality. Okay. Project 11, located in Tamarack, includes the installation of 12 electric vehicle charging stations in city owned parking lots. Their current cost estimate is $436,546, dollars, 
which is below the plan's cost estimate of 500000 The stations are located throughout the city as shown on the map. This is another one that needs to be pulled? Oh, is that Cooper City? Or Tamarack, Tamarack. 018? Yes. yes. The charging stations, are we on number 11? Yes, the electric charging stations, TA. MA018 is pulled. Project 12, located in Cooper City, includes the replacement of nine existing wayfinding signs throughout the city. The current cost estimate is $30,000, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $75,000. The signs are located throughout the city as shown on the on the map. Project 13, located in Hollandale Beach, includes the installation of digital transit stop signs, display signs, to show real-time transit information. The current cost estimate is 513600 which is below the plan's cost estimate of 520000 The sign, the signage is located at various transit stops throughout the city. Project 14, located in Deerfield Beach, includes pedestrian street lighting improvements in three locations throughout the city. The current cost estimate is for 800000 which is the same as the cost, plan's cost estimate of 800000 the three corridors are Southwest 6th Avenue between Southwest 15th Street and Southwest 10th Street, Northwest 3rd Avenue between West Sample Road and Northwest 48th Street, and Northwest 6th Street between Northwest 45th Avenue and North Powerline Road. Project 15, located in Southwest Ranches, includes the installation of a catch basin and drainage piping in, in an adjacent canal in order to address drainage deficiencies occurring in the project area. The current cost estimate is 124000 which is the same plan's cost estimate of 124000 The project is located at Southwest 50th Street and Southwest 182nd Trace Terrace. Project 16 located in Oakland Park, includes landscaping improvement on the median of Oakland Park Boulevard. Their current cost estimate is 330000 which is the same as the plan's cost estimate of 330000 The project is located on West Oakland Park Boulevard from Northwest 31st Avenue to Northwest 21st Avenue. Project 17, located in Hollywood, includes the installation of drainage improvements within the right of, public right-of-way to address drainage deficiencies in the project area. The current cost estimate is for $5 million, which is the same as the plan's cost estimate of $5 million. The project area is located north of Pembroke Road, east of South 60th Avenue, south of Washington Street, and west of South 56th Avenue. Project 18 in Pembroke Park entails drainage improvements within public right-of-way to address drainage deficiencies occurring in the project area. Current cost estimate is $1,075,115. The project is located on Southwest 25th Street as depicted on the map. That item gets pulled. Yep. Project 19 in West Park entails traffic calming, signage, pavement markings, drainage improvements, all within the public right-of-way. Current cost estimates is $163,519, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $200,000.
The project is located on Southwest 57th Avenue and Southwest 20th Street. Project 20 in Fort Lauderdale entails a shared use path, lighting, crosswalks, ADA improvements, and traffic calming. The project is tied to project number 32. Current cost estimates is $2 million, which is equal to the plans cost estimate. The project is located on Northwest 15th Avenue from Sunrise Boulevard to Mills Pond Road, Mills, Mills Pond Park. Project 21 in Tamarack entails traffic calming, sidewalks, signage, pavement markings, and landscaping improvements. Current cost estimate is $528,902, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1 million. The project is located on Northwest 70th Avenue from McNabb Road to Northwest 77th Street. Project 22 in Wilt Manors entails traffic calming, sidewalks, signage, and pavement mark markings. Current cost estimate is $629,804, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1 million. The project is located on Northeast 24th Street and Northeast 15th Avenue from Middle River to Northeast 24th Street. Project 23 in Pompano Beach entails drainage improvements within public right-of-way to address drainage deficiencies. Current cost estimate is $3,741,806, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $3,772,201. The project is located in the Kendall Lake neighborhood as depicted on the map. Project 24 in Hallandell Beach entails installation of bus shelters within public right-of-way. Current cost estimate is $2,977,563, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $3 million. The project is located in various locations in the city as depicted on the map. Project 25 in Davie entails road widening, sidewalks, signage, and drainage improvements. Current cost estimates is $1 million, same as the plan, plan's cost estimate. The city is leveraging other funding sources to complete the $2.3 million project. The project is located on College Avenue from Nova Road to State Road 84. Project 26 in Hollywood entails landscaping improvements within the public right-of-way to complement the recent complete streets project improvements. Current cost estimate is $700,000, same as the plan's cost estimate. City is using other sources, um, other funding sources to complete the project. The project is located on Hollywood Boulevard from City Hall to Dixie Highway. Project 27 in Lauderdale Lakes entails lighting, sidewalks, signage, and drainage improvements within the public right-of-way. Current cost estimate is $863,663, which is above the plan's cost estimate of $750,000. The project is located on Northwest 36 Terrace from Oakland Park Boulevard to Northwest 38th Avenue. Project 28 in Weston entails sidewalks, curb ramps, signage, and landscaping within the public right-of-way. Current cost estimate is $319,086, which is above the plan's cost estimate of $150,000. The project is located on Lakeview Drive from Saddle, from Saddle Club Road to Bonaventure Boulevard. Project 29 in Wilton Manors entails 
a public surface parking lot adjacent to a park, trailhead, and bus stops. Current cost estimate is $849,475, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $15 million. The project is located at the southwest quadrant of Northeast 14th Avenue and Northeast 21st Street. And that, that one. that's being pulled. Project 30 in Weston entails wayfinding signage throughout the city within the public right of way. Current cost estimates is $232,739, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1,056,000. The project is located on various corridors as depicted on the map. Project 31 in Tamarack entails emergent signals within the public right of way. Current cost estimates is $445,817, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $500,000. The project is located on Hiatus Road, north of State Road of the state of State Street as depicted on the map. Project 32 in Fort Lauderdale entails a shared use path, lighting, crosswalks, ADA improvements, and traffic calming. The project is tied to project number 20. Current cost estimates is $996,668, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1 million. The project is located on Northwest 15th Avenue from Sunrise Boulevard to Mills Pond Park. Project 33 in Wilton Manors entails wayfinding sign signage throughout the city within public right of way. Current cost estimates is $639,650, which is below the plan's cost estimate of $1 million. The project location is depicted on the map. Mr. Chairman, this concludes the 33 construction ready projects. The next four projects are the design of Miramar Parkway and Pembroke Road extensions, which is part of the regional network. These projects are joint projects between the cities of Pembroke Pines and Miramar and will be, be combined and delivered as a single project by the city of Miramar. Project number 34 in Miramar entails the construction of a new roadway where one does not exist today. The design estimate is $760,000. The project location is from Southwest 192nd Terrace to Pembroke Road. Project 35 in Miramar entails expanding Pembroke Road to two to four lanes. The design estimate is $1,510,000. The project location is from Southwest 184 Avenue to 200, 200th Avenue. Project 36 in Miramar entails expanding Pembroke Road from two to four lanes. The design estimate is $2,270,000. The project location is from Southwest 160th Avenue to 184th Avenue. Project 37 in Miramar entails expanding Pembroke Road and a new road in a new four-lane roadway, the design estimate is $1,390,000. The project location is from Southwest 200th Avenue to US 27. The next 73 projects are for the top three ranked planning and design projects for each city. As directed by Broward County staff, planning cost estimates were calculated as 3% of the total project cost, and design cost estimates were calculated as 12% of the total project cost. Project 38 in Fort Lauderdale entails reconfiguration of Andrews Avenue 
in order to potentially for a potential one-way pair in order to improve traffic flow and transit transit only lane this project is tied to project number 88 the planning estimate is one hundred fifty thousand dollars the project location is from southeast 17th street on sunrise to sunrise boulevard Project 39 in Oakland Park entails citywide mass armed conversion of traffic signals. The design estimate is $945,000. The project location are at various locations as shown on the map. Project 40 in Coral Springs entails new sidewalks where ex existing sidewalks are asphalt, not ADA compliant or missing. The planning estimate is $600,000. The project locations are at various locations as shown here on this map. Project 41 in Coconut Creek entails new bus shelters and improvements for bus stops to, to be ADA compliant. The design estimate is $432,000. The project location are at various locations as shown on this map. Project 42 in Pompano entails sidewalk, bike lane, light, lighting, landscaping on two corridors. The design estimate is $2,983,200. The project location are at Dixie Highway from McNabb Road to Sample Road and Atlantic Boulevard and Northwest 6th Avenue to Cypress Creek Road. Project 43 in Hollywood entails pedestrian access to a linear park, wayfinding signage, traffic calming, and, and paved marking. The project would complement the existing transit mobility hub project that is completed. The design estimate is $120,000. The project location is State Road 7 from Johnson Street to Pembroke Road. Project 44 in Davie entails updating Orange Drive to a three-lane major corridor with shoulder. The design estimate is $360,000. The project location is at Orange Drive from Southwest 67th Avenue to State Road 7. Project 45 in Miramar entails buffered bike lanes. The planning estimate is $90,000. The project location is Pembroke Road from State Road 7 to, uh, to Island Drive. Project 46 is Pembroke Pines and Pembroke Pines entails constructing new sidewalks to fill gaps. The planning estimate is $132,938. The project locations are depicted on the map. Project, 101, project 47 in West Park entails installing, installing pedestrian street lights on State Road 7. The design estimate is $90,000. The project location is on the east corridor of State Road 7 from Pembroke Road to County Line Road. Project 48.